Brought to you by River State Government, the treasure base of the nation. Hello and welcome to another episode of Ion Rivers. Health, as they say, is wealth. And this is perhaps why the development of the sector is key to the economic growth of any government. I'm Keisha Gitari. Join me as in today's episode we take a look at the River State healthcare sector. Stay tuned for more Ion Rivers. The River State healthcare sector has had an unpleasant reputation, known as dysfunctional and on the verge of collapse. A review conducted by the current administration revealed that the River State government owned a total of 40 hospitals and over 400 primary healthcare facilities. But due to poor maintenance, the physical infrastructure of several of these was in decline and decay. The sector also suffered from irregular water and electricity supply, which meant that facilities were unable to run at their full capacity. Institutions also house obsolete and non-functioning medical equipment. All of this combined led to an alarmingly low utilization rate of only about 5 to 10 percent of the population. I don't like talking so much about what we met when we came in because there are some good things that we are about taking off when we came in. Things like they had, they had policies of a free medical care, categorized them, and all the rest. But the facilities to render this health was not, they were not there. The facility infrastructure was bad. The workforce, I used, I called them that they were in a state of uh, learned helplessness, most comatose. Uh, so we had to start from scratch, more or less, building the primary care system. That we have done to a very significant level now. Um, we've started with secondary care and uh, we believe this tenor we should be able to do, make a significant impact on the secondary care system. So by and large, these are the summary, the changes we have put in. In a bid to correct the situation, the State Ministry of Health put in place several developmental steps. These focus primarily on infrastructure and manpower development, looking at the sector one level at a time. One of the key failings of the previous medical scheme was the lack of a proper referral system and centres. This meant that patients needing more specialised care than that offered at the primary level were often not getting further treatment. In order to tackle this, six zonal hospitals are being provided and will be supported by the new 120-bed Kelsey Harrison Hospital and the Specialist Dental and Maxiofacial Hospital. The aim is to make secondary healthcare more accessible and the transition between the two levels of treatment more fluid. The state also went on to establish a much-needed emergency medical services unit, which pulls all state-owned ambulances together and operates 24 hours a day, free of charge. It is currently the holding body of 40 land ambulances, 4 mobile hospitals and 15 boat ambulances. The establishment of several healthcare programs has been an added facet in attempts to see the River State healthcare reach its potential. The free medical program was expanded to provide all-inclusive free medical healthcare that enables patients to now benefit from services such as MRI scans, spectacle frames from the opticians and so on. The Malaria Control Program and the Malaria Elimination Project are both key to the state's plans to eradicate the disease and have seen a reduction in its spread of up to 57% in some areas. The spill-off of this success is that other mosquito-transmitted diseases, such as yellow fever, are also being addressed. Free pre- and postnatal care was also added to the state's medical services, as was the National Programme on Immunisation, which has seen diseases such as polio almost completely eradicated. We went into disease control and uh, since we came we've, done, we've made a strong impact in uh, communicable diseases and uh, particularly uh, malaria. Uh, today, you can't talk about malaria control and elimination in Nigeria, West Africa, without boasting West Africa, the whole of West Africa, without coming to talk to us and asking us questions, how far, what are you, we are blazing the trail and we believe that we can eliminate malaria. That is historic too. The workforce were reawakened to their responsibility 
by and large. We had to go into recruitment. We had to go into uh, incentivizing the doctors. Today, I can say that uh, the only existing secondary care facility, the Braithwaite Memorial Specialist Hospital, has accreditation to train doctors in some departments. <music> Primary healthcare was a key focal point for development as it is at this level that the most basic and fundamental healthcare services is delivered to the grassroots. In this regard, the state government aimed to bring health to the doorsteps of the people and the establishment of the home-based care program is one way that this is being achieved. In addition, the state has completed 108 of its planned 160 model primary healthcare centres, which are spread throughout all the local government areas of the state. However, in a bid to ensure that primary healthcare works efficiently, the Ministry of Health has extended its scope to include improving water, power and transport sectors where they intercept with the workings of the healthcare system. Several of the state's free healthcare programmes are run through the model primary health facilities. We met with some of the doctors and patients at a few of these institutions to get their views on what the changes in the medical sector have meant to them. Primary Health Centre is a health centre that has been built so that healthcare will be accessible to those in their own, we are in their home now, we are in their own environment. So we are bringing healthcare closer to them as possible, as much as possible, so that it can be easily accessible for them. They don't need to pay transportation to go all the way to the general hospitals and the teaching hospitals. So, and there's always a doctor here. So as much as possible, everything you need in a primary healthcare facility is here. Our staff strength, we have doctors here. I'm a resident medical doctor. We also have youth copa doctors. We have nurses, we have chief nursing officers, we have every form, every cadre of their pharmacists, pharmacy technicians, we have laboratory scientists, laboratory technicians, all built up into the health center staff. And we run, we actually have our facilities running 24 hours, literally for the maternity shift, because for a lady who comes in in pregnancy, who comes in in labor, definitely labor may not come in the morning. So the maternity is open 24 hours, so we have staffs running there. We run routine immunization services, so we give all the immunizations to the children free of charge. Everybody is immunized free of charge. So we give them regular immunizations and we give them appointments to come subsequently for all the childhood vaccines. And we also run our regular routine antenatal care services. We would always dissuade the woman from going to the traditional birth attendants. That's why antenatal care is readily available. And we also emphasize on free medical care for the River State's government. And free medical care, previously you would have heard that maybe free medical care was just for a particular group of people. But right now it's open to everybody. It's open to no matter, so far you're a Nigerian, whatever state you come from we would still give you free medical care in the health center and whatever age group. It's not just limited to those above 60, it's not limited to those below five. Anybody, you just need to come and register because there has to be a form of registration so that we can keep your identity. And so far the drugs are available, we will give them to you, we will attend to you free of charge. You don't need to pay anything. If you look down there, there is a board there specifying every requirement for the free medical care. We also have we see geriatric patients here too. So there are a lot of elderly patients, especially in this area. You know, Elekaya is more or less, it's in the town, but there are people that this is their own local village. So all those geriatric patients, they still come here. We attend to them. We attend to hypertensive, we attend to diabetics, we attend to all the, any ailment, whatever minor ailments it is, diarrheal cases, malaria cases, respiratory infections, we see all those people. And any cases that would be beyond the primary health care center, we would definitely refer because this is the first level of care. And we have the secondary level, we have the tertiary level. So if we also have ambulance services, so in case there is a woman in labor and we perceive that there's going to be something that wouldn't be able to be handled there, we would definitely call the ambulance in to immediately refer the patient to a secondary or tertiary facility where those levels of care can be given. Uh, here we have the free medical. Almost all our patients are free medical. They are benefiting from free medical. And the government is doing well. Patients are happy coming to the health center without paying money. They feel happy going home without spending their money. 
the card, the drugs, everything is free here. And um, the fee happy, the poor ones are, since then, they have been looking healthy because if they are sick, they will come to the health center. They know that it's free. Instead of uh, staying in the house and uh, start suffering from the illness, when they find out that it's free, they will rush to the health center and take their drugs. Well, it's helping. We don't pay money. We don't buy drugs. Unless the drugs they don't have, we buy. They die for delivering. They take care of me very well and I deliver safe delivery. I like the, how they attend to us, their media, their media drive, they are always on seat. We are not spending money much in sickness. The doctors, yeah, they, are, they do their work effectively. The change in the medical referral system highlighted the shortcomings of the secondary and tertiary health institutions. To address this, the Birthweight Memorial Hospital was upgraded to a special hospital. Like the model primary healthcare centres, the hospital also operates under the free medical scheme and this means that it provides surgeries and specialist care at no cost to patients under the free medical programme and who have been referred from the state primary healthcare institutions. The hospital has gone from being just a, I think about 20 bedded hospital, presently it's a 364 bedded hospital. We have more uh, facilities building, like presently we have the radiology department that has the state of arts equipment, the CT, MRI, mammography, and some other machines. We have about 700 staff, that's including the doctors, the nurses, the a lab, everybody inclusive. We are also known for training, like all the medic, the, we train resident doctors, nurses from School of Nursing, midwifery, they do their practicals here, and we also do the, the medical lab tech, uh, technicians and scientists from the different schools in the state, they all come to BMA for the practical sessions. The pharmacies, the optometrists, virtually all the parts of uh, medicine, they all come to BMA for training. And that means that we, we are part of the people generating the workforce in health. Aside from looking at the physical infrastructure of the sector, the state has also shone a spotlight on manpower development. This was important, especially with the provision of over 100 new healthcare facilities, all of which needed to be staffed. Since 2007, 350 new doctors, nurses and other healthcare staff have been recruited and deployed to facilities throughout the state. There has also been more of a focus on the training of medical staff, with the accreditation of the schools of nursing and midwifery restored and the EMS training school has been established and trained 325 new medical practitioners at various levels since May this year. The immediate, the first high level manpower will must have to come from abroad, the Americans, the Europeans will all be there. Uh, but the contract, the arrangement is such that the other level of manpower will be local for purposes of training with the modern techniques in healthcare. From nursing, anesthesia, even methods of keeping hospitals clean. Our own people will be trained to do that. The River State healthcare sector has been developing over the years with a focus on manpower and infrastructure in a bid to help the system attain its full potential. Join us after the break where we meet with River State citizens to get their views on the changes in the system and how it is affecting them.